For a better explanation of what the trend lines tell us, we're joined by Dr. Bob Walker, the chair of UCSF's Department of Medicine. Dr. Walker, I always appreciate your time. Let me start with this. This time last year, we were worried about running out of hospital beds. This year, the concern seems to be about staff. Not only are these brave men and women exhausted, but they're getting Omicron. Your thoughts? Yeah, they're not getting it from the hospital. They're getting it from real life. They're out there like the rest of us and uh, trying to be careful. But this uh, new variant is so incredibly infectious that we are seeing a fair number of doctors and nurses and others come down sick. And that makes it difficult to staff our hospitals. Now, that, that may be one of the greatest worries that we have now. Will we have enough doctors and nurses for the ICU and for the floors and for the emergency room? Yeah, Dr. Walker, you just posted a tweet about 10 minutes ago saying it's likely one in 12 people in San Francisco without symptoms have COVID. The FDA said this week at home tests were less sensitive to detecting Omicron. You and others had a very strong reaction to that since it really is one of our best tools here. Yeah, I, I wish they hadn't said that. I mean, it, it is true that they are a little bit less sensitive with Omicron. There's some evidence that on your first day of infectivity, uh, the rapid test with Omicron, the rapid test sometimes tests negative, but by d day two, it almost always tests positive. I still think the rapid tests are a very valuable tool to set, to tell if someone is, is infectious. So if you're getting together with people who uh, and you want to be sure that there's nobody infectious using the rapid test, I think is a very valuable tool, although it's not it's not absolutely perfect. The one in 12 number comes from UCSF. We test all of our people who are uh, coming in for anything. If you're coming in for symptoms of COVID, obviously we test you, but you also test you if you're having heart surgery or mm. cancer surgery or colonoscopy. And that's the group uh, right now, 8% of those folks who have no symptoms of COVID whatsoever are testing positive for COVID. So it implies that about one in 12 people who feel fine are currently carrying COVID with them and might very well be infectious. So it's a it's a wild number, far higher than any time we've seen in the last two years. A reminder to be careful. Obviously, your Twitter is very popular. One of your threads providing some hope for the near future. And as we look at trends in South Africa plateauing, saying in February, we could be in a happy place. Tell us what that means from your perspective. Yeah, I mean, the first thing to realize is that's February. The next six weeks could be quite terrible and probably will be a ton of new cases and some particularly unvaccinated people getting quite sick, going to the hospital and a fair number of people will die. So I don't think we're in a happy place now and I think we have to be super careful. But by February, I think we're going to be in a position where if judging by South Africa and now looking at what's happening in London, which is starting to plateau, cases will probably be coming down. This thing seems to go up fast and come down fast. And by that time, you're either going to be vaccinated or if you're not vaccinated, you're almost certainly going to be infected with Omicron. And assuming you survive that, uh, most of the population will be immune. There will also be the new Pfizer drug that cuts the rate of serious illness down by 90%. It should be more generally available. So I think by February, we may see cases falling, the availability of an oral, of a pill that you can take if you do get COVID and you're at high risk that lowers your chances of a bad outcome. So we may find ourselves in a pretty, in a pretty good place. Uh, doctor, you talked about Pfizer. The FDA is set to authorize the Pfizer booster for 12 to 15 year olds. This amidst a major increase in unvaccinated children in the hospital. How much of a difference will this make? I think it's really important. It is very clear that the kids need to be vaccinated and that the uh, the data as it comes in is increasingly clear that the vaccines are extraordinarily safe in the kids. And any kid who ends up in the hospital, virtually all of them, the CDC showed today, virtually all of them were unvaccinated. So it's not even a close call in terms of the risks versus the benefits of the vaccine. And if we want to keep our schools open, and we do, uh, the kids need to be vaccinated. And we should be concentrating on doing that. Yeah, UCSF's Dr. Bob Walker, always appreciate your insights, sir, and all the work you and your team are doing. Happy New Year to you. Thank you to you as well.